Now, when you imagine global warming operating, the general way that we see it happening are these videos that we see of the Antarctic, of Greenland, huge icebergs breaking off of the ice shelves there. Uh, and it seems like that's the way that it's mostly happening, that it's, things are falling off of the edges of these large accumulations of ice and snow and things like that. Turns out, with new data, we're finding out that much of the actual loss of ice in these ice shelves is not coming off of the outward edges of it, but that they're actually uh, like falling apart and melting from the bottom up. And so this is new data coming from UC Irvine. Uh, the researcher is Eric Rigno and a number of his colleagues working in conjunction with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. And so they studied 2007 and 2008 uh, ice shelf uh, thickness and the speed and accumulation of snowfall over those periods of time. And they've actually got some very interesting results. And so what they found is that 48% uh, of the meltwater lost through 2007 and 2008 was lost from ice shelves that came from the smaller shelves on the southeastern Pacific side of the Antarctic. Um, and by the way, these smaller shelves, uh, these smaller units that they're looking at, account for only about 8% of the total ice shelf cover in the Antarctic. And so these very small regions that previously had not been researched in any great degree are actually ac uh, accounting for a great deal of lost uh, meltwater there. Um, and so one of the reasons that this is happening, one of the results of this uh, data uh, that's been gathered by Eric Rigno is that the disproportionate loss from the smaller ice shelves is because the smaller shelves sit on relatively warmer water than the bigger shelves. And so at this point, you need to bear in mind that some of the ice shelves are directly resting on uh, the, uh, the bottom of the sea, basically. Um, those are to some degree resistant to this sort of melting from the, the water underneath. Um, but the, the, the arms, the other ice shelves sticking off of that area, do have the ocean directly underneath them. Uh, and the farther you go out into the Pacific in some of these areas, the, the temperature of the ocean is significantly higher. And that's why you're seeing this increased melting in those areas. Now, uh, this new data accumulated from 2007 and 2008 is unlikely to convince anyone who doesn't believe that global warming is going on, or if they believe that global warming is happening, but it's because of cycles in the environment, unicorn farts, whatever stupid explanation they have for it, this is unlikely to change their minds. Um, but I think that it does give us, in conjunction with the, the recent data that uh, the carbon parts per million went above 400 for the first time ever measured, that something needs to be done. And now bear in mind, look, you've been watching politics, you've been watching the news for the past couple of weeks, what are we talking about? Now we're talking about the NSA. Uh, if we ever stop talking about that, maybe we'll touch on Turkey and Syria, go back to the IRS scandal, the AP scandal. Do you know how many pages you need to flip through the newspaper recently to find anything about global climate change? Yeah, you have to go pretty far. And so parts of the world, important parts, that are going to have big consequences on the geopolitical environment of the world in decades and centuries to come, are changing rapidly. It's not being covered by most news sources. There are some Brad blog, alternate, raw story, uh, outlets like that. Um, but these are very important, uh, not just environmental matters, but they're going to have important political ramifications. And it needs more coverage than it's currently getting. So whether these massive icebergs are falling off the sides of Antarctica or it's melting from the bottom up, this is going to have a very major effect on humanity in the centuries to come. Uh, and so pay attention to that.